Bradwell on Sea is located on the eastern tip of the Dengue Peninsula on the south bank of the River Blackwater. The village and its surroundings are steeped in history dating back to the Romans and Saxons. This coastal area is an important site for nature conservation and forms part of the Dengue National Nature Reserve. The ancient isolated chapel of St Peter's on the Wall was originally constructed as an Anglo-Celtic church for the East Saxons in AD 654 by St Sed who was educated in Lindisfarne. It was built on the ruins of the abandoned 3rd century Roman fort of Athona. The wooden posts jutting out of the river near Sales Point are known to be a Saxon fish trap. The pillbox here was built in World War II to help defend the coast from invaders. A line of ex-Port of London Authority lighters were installed just off the coast to help prevent coastal erosion. The low-lying areas between the land and open salt water are regularly flooded by the tide creating salt marsh. The salt marsh in the Blackwater estuary and its surroundings hold one of the most important concentrations of rare and unusual salt tolerant plants in Essex. Bradwell Shell Bank Nature Reserve or Bradwell Cockle Spit is managed by the Essex Wildlife Trust. It consists of 30 acres of shell bank and salt marsh. The beach like spit is built up by tidal currents and is mainly cockle and oyster shells. Good evening everyone. I'm back at Bradwell on Sea tonight on the Essex coast and I'm joined by a new subscriber, Dan. Yep. He's here. Drinking me cider. And uh, yeah, he's a cider man, I'm happy about that, that's good. So basically, yeah, I've um, come straight from work and uh, met up with Dan here at the uh, St Peter's on the Wall Chapel car park and we've headed out to the beach that's sort of here in the dark, the sea's out there. We'll show you more of that in the morning. We've set everything up. Um, got a bit of a funny story to tell you about that. Um, so I got this British Army Gore-Tex bivy bag with me tonight. I did plan to take my Wild Country Zephyrus 1 tent, but I stupidly forgot the main pole. So I had to walk all the way back to the car, which took me about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. And luckily I had this as an emergency in the boot. So it pays to keep stuff in your car. <laughs> so that should keep me absolutely dry and toasty. We're not forecast rain tonight. In fact, it's not even that cold. The stars are out. There's no wind. It's, it's a beautiful night. So yeah, and we're just sat here. We've got our chairs out. And yeah, so I, I've basically, yeah, like cowboy camping. And Dan has got, tell us what tent you got again. Probably. It's a Van Gogh though, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I see it, Banshee 200. Banshee. 2018, I think it is. It's the new one, the Banshee Pro 200, I think. Yeah, it is. Um, you've got an Osprey Exos 48 okay. litre rucksack. Lovely, I want to get one of those. Highly recommended. Uh, what have you got inside? Uh, now you're asking me, now you put me on the spot. Hang on, what have I got in Go there? Go on, loads of Exped stuff, Exped. Uh, ah. Exped mat, Exped pillow, uh, Rab 700 sleeping bag. Nice. So yeah, try to keep it lightweight as possible. Yeah, that's always do, good. I do quite a lot of soloing, so. That's good. So how long have you been wild camping for? On and off for about 12 years, I think now. Decent. So, Blimey. Yeah, I've sort of hit it hard in the past two years. You really got into it, yeah. Because I'll take my dog for most of it. So. Oh, decent. That's pretty yeah. cool. So... Yeah, I mean, it's the first time we've met up, so it's, um, it should be good fun, this. Um, so we've found this nice little spot, sort of, amongst sort of the, uh, I don't know what you could call it, the the seagrass or something, I don't know. Amongst the stars. Amongst the stars, that's a good way of putting it, yeah. And then you follow that all the way around there, that's Bradwell Waterside, about a seven, eight mile walk, and the uh, the old uh, Bradwell Nuclear Power Station's around there, of course. Lovely part of the world, hidden gem of Essex, Bradwell on sea, I would say. Uh, food tonight, I've got uh, MRE menu 15 Mexican style chicken stew, 
Dan, what have you got? Hit us. I'll have myself a Wayfarer chocolate pudding. Oh. Just uh, splashing out there. Nice. Have you got a, a main meal? No, that wasn't my main meal. I think, well, this Lovely. is my, my dessert is just a, a nice cheap Copperberg raspberry and a, a Copperberg mixed fruits pushing the boat out. There. Nice. Dessert for dinner, cider. We're going to get along just fine, honestly. <laughs> That's perfect. Ciders, though, I'm excited about these. Um, hopefully, you can see them. They're uh, like a London brewery or cidery, I think it's called. I don't know. Hawks. Urban Orchard Apple Cider, 4.5%, medium dry. And then, to go with it, I've got a Hawks Dead and Buried <laughs> Mixed Berry Cider, 4%. And I love the artwork and stuff. I need a drink. It's been a, a long, stressful week. As usual, I'm sure you can relate to that. Yeah, so peaceful. It's very, very quiet. Okay, so the first cider of the night is going to be this Hawks Urban Orchard Apple Cider. Dan picked this one out first for me. So it's 4.5% medium dry. I mean, this artwork is cracking. I absolutely love it. You've got to have good artwork on a bottle. Anyway, so they, they market themselves as the saviours of cider. Two worlds unite in this classic medium dry cider made from a unique blend of London pressed and country apples. Crafted to deliver a smooth and harmonious body with a complex and rich texture on the palate. All complemented by a crisp, dry, wine-like finale. Urban Orchard, hand-picked in the capital. So, I've, I've really been looking forward to these. I've had them in my cupboard at home for ages. Alright. So, oh, I've been waiting for this all week. Cheers, Dan. Cheers, mate. Cheers everyone. Oh, it's so smooth. That's a lovely cider. <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> First sip. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, it's just a normal kind of plain flavour apple cider, but very smooth. Not overly fizzy, but not like flat, flat. That's a really good cider. Do you want to try a bit of that? Yeah, go. go on, go for it. Yeah. Oh god, yeah, how do you explain that? It's it, really nice. It's got something different going on, innit? Go on, have a go at that. Go on, have a go. <laughs> you should bought more of them. I oh, know. God, yeah, I've got them in like Sainsbury's, I think, in Brentwood somewhere. I was like, I'm having them. Um, That's nice. That puts me Copperberg to shame. Very easy to drink. That's all I'm going to say. You could, you could get hammered on them. Do you know, I think I'm going to have to give that a 9 out of 10. It's really nice. I've, you know, I can't wait for the, the dead and buried one. That could be amazing. Anyways, yeah. So, to a good camp. Good weekend. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Dan. Cheers, mate. So, as I mentioned earlier, this is dinner for tonight. USMRE Menu 15 Mexican-style chicken stew. So, let's see what's in it. Okay, so this is it all laid out. First off, in the middle, we've got some pepperoni pizza crackers. I think I've had those a couple of times before. We've got over here, we've got a first strike apple and cinnamon flavour, nutritious energy bar apparently. Then down the bottom, some cheese spread with jalapenos. That's good, I've had that before, love it. And some crackers to go with it. The uh, oh, the accessory packet, add some iodized salt as usual. The toilet paper, probably need that in the morning. <laughs> Some uh, beverage based cranberry grape flavour powder. I've had that before, it's quite nice. Moist towel it. We've got some crushed red pepper. Some uh, cinnamon flavoured chewing gum. Cardboard sleeve for the main meal to go in. Uh, for a hot drink, we've got a chocolate hazelnut cocoa beverage powder. Then the main meal, that's the Mexican style chicken stew. The FRH Flames Ration Heater, that's for that. And we've got some mango peach apple sauce. Not had that before, I'm looking forward to that as well. So that is dinner, and you know what I'm going to say. Enough yakking, let's get snacking. <laughs> okay, so we've got the, uh, the pepperoni pizza crackers out again, which look like dog biscuits. But they're quite tasty. Dan's tried one. You're a fan, aren't you? Yeah. 
<laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Simple. Oh, very nice. Um, we've got the cheese spread with jalapenos in. So it's got a little bit of a kick to it. Um, I cocked it up again. I didn't cut a corner off, so it's, it's come out like that. And I did actually heat it in the thing. So yeah, it won't spread, but it is nice, this stuff. Excuse the table manners, or lack of. Then we've got the, uh, the chocolate hazelnut um, cocoa hot chocolate beverage powder thingy. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Yeah, there's a slight hint of hazelnut there. Better than a, a regular hot chocolate, I would say. Then we'll have a look at this uh, apple cinnamon flavour first strike energy bar. These are notoriously chewy. They're very filling. Oh yeah, we had a really nice hiss on the uh, the crackers, by the way, when I opened them, and I wasn't filming. But yeah, it was it was loud. Um, let's have a look at this. Uh, there we go. It's like a, just a solid, <laughs> a solid block. Look at that. That's get more manufactured if you tried oh that's, oh that's where it's cold it's um it's not very malleable but anyway we'll persevere i might break my teeth on this no i can't chew that i might have to warm it up i think but i gave it a little lick and it tastes pretty good actually um yeah apple and cinnamon oh i've got a hammer in the car if you want it no i think we might need it like an ice pick or something but yeah um you can see little bits in it and stuff. Yeah, I might have to warm that up a bit. Maybe stick it in my pocket for half hour. I think it's probably time to get the main out. And oh, there we go. Bit of slop. So this is a Mexican-style chicken stew. Um, I'm sort of propping it up against the tripod here at the moment. There. Yeah. Maybe dunk some cracker in it, or maybe even break up the crackers and mix it in. Might add something to it, so let's try it like that first. Yeah, that's nice. I reckon maybe sort of adding, somehow adding the cheese spread could help it as well. Oh, it's just pungent, isn't it? There we go, big bit of chicken. How real the chicken is, is anyone's guess. Um, oh, it's certainly hot. Apart from the lumps of chicken, it's very watery, there's not a lot else to it. I think there's some sweet corn, some peppers. Um, yeah, very sloppy. So I reckon <coughs> you're going to want to add some of the crackers to it. Um, just to sort of zhuzh it up a bit. Um, I don't know about adding the pepperoni pizza crackers to it, I'm not sure, I might not risk that but I'll certainly stick them in so because I can't spread the, the cheese spread very well so I could uh, mix them up a little bit gives it a bit more body to it definitely having the crackers in it so yeah well we've uh, pretty much eaten everything else all that <coughs> all that's left is the mango peach apple sauce the cranberry grape beverage drink powder thing that's in there and that first strike energy bar that I've kept in my pocket for a while to try and warm it up so it's not as uh, tough to chew. Let's have a look at this uh, stuff. Ben had this, Londoner Outdoors. There you go, little shout out. Check out Londoner Outdoors, mate Ben. Oh, it's like baby food. Look at that. Well, that's nice. I don't know if it's worth like warming it up or anything. I'm I'm just gonna eat it cold I think. Um I don't know if you could put it on the crackers. I mean I've eaten them all but I could try having it on the uh the old first strike bar. Dunno. There it is. Ugh. I think it's still quite tough. Well I've bitten a bit off of it. Oh tasty. Um the cinnamon, I'd say, is more prevalent than the apple. Let's, um, let's try a little bit of this uh, apple sauce stuff on it. Oh, that was more than I expected. 
here they go all right together that's actually pretty tasty yeah so all in all um, I'm a fan of those two things the bar and the, the apple sauce uh, the hazelnut hot chocolate was very good and the main was pretty good as well the Mexican style chicken stew so yeah I'll probably have this menu again I think okay we're gonna crack open the final cider of the evening so it's another Hawks cider dead and buried mixed berry cider four percent so yeah saviors of cider Hawks gets juiced up we've blended our classic medium dry cider with a selection of finely tuned mixed red berries strawberry raspberry and blueberry fused in juicy layers smooth bodied with a textured palate and a natural delicate sweetness dead and buried fruit cider reborn so if you've got a drink at home or you're thinking about having a drink pour yourself a drink have a drink with me <laughs> all right cheers everyone oh it's got a really nice sort of black currant -y sort of smell to it first impressions it's uh it's not overly sweet it's not too fizzy but it's not flat as well it's somewhere in between very crisp and clear tasting but yeah not overly sweet so it's not overly sickly but there is certainly like a you know a, a berry taste to it of course that's that's a really good little fruit cider that a little bit like um, a copperberg but not yeah not a sugary really but it's and it's not sour either it is literally perfect i mean i think this one along with the the other one that was like a plain apple one i think i'm gonna have to give both of these nine out of ten these are amazing ciders and i'll definitely try and get some more of these to show you but yeah that's incredible it's actually quite late now it's about half two in the morning because we got here quite late and I had to go back and get the bivvy bag from the car so that sort of wasted quite a lot of time so you know we've been sort of sat here you know drinking and eating and chatting putting the world to rights and uh didn't even realize yeah the time so it's like it's like bloody half two in the morning probably aim to sort of still get up around you know seven half seven sort of thing um and it's still really really quiet here there's a few sort of like you can hear some birds and owls in the distance very faint hum of like boats very very peaceful here and the tide is like nowhere to be seen we've not heard a wave at all so yeah it's, um, it's been good it's been really really good here's Dan's tent the fog is like really thick at the moment look at that just looks like dust in the air literally it looks like it's snowing on the camera that is the fog everyone coming in sort of off the fields going out to sea and yeah everything's sort of it's got like sort of the damp almost that's almost like got like a frost forming on it um but Oh, it's, it's not been too cold really actually only the temperature has dropped but it's still not too bad I just can't believe how, how thick the, the the fog or the mist is we'll probably uh, bid you good night and uh, I'll show you more in the morning and stuff so it's a uh, it's good night from me it's good night from me see you in the morning
Morning everyone, it's just gone 7am and I'm the only one awake at the moment, taking a little walk just along the sea wall, I've been here as I say a few times before, this is probably one of the few locations that I've been to multiple times and camped at multiple times and this is probably the first time I've been here where it's actually been I've, well, I say where it's actually, I've really noticed how peaceful it is here. There is literally no sound at all, and it was like that last night. All you can hear in the background is the sound of all the fishing boats heading off sort of further out to sea and stuff because we're in sort of a bit of an inlet here. Yeah, they're all heading out to do a day's work. There's something satisfying about watching that. And you just got the sound of the waves birds singing. It's going to be a really really nice day today. It's, it's quite warm already out. I feel like I'm overdressed at the moment. I slept okay really. It wasn't too bad. I'm not going to lie it wasn't my best night's sleep. Um, I had to use Candice's night mask that she got me. Because um, once the sun, the sun come up which was quite early this morning that was just constantly in my eyes so I stuck that on. But I was incredibly warm. Uh, it was comfy, I wasn't on a slope or anything. It didn't slide around or anything. It was uh yeah, it was it was just right. Heading back to camp now. But it's absolutely lovely here. It's such an amazing place to be. Lovely little beach here. And it's the water's always quite calm here because where they've dumped loads of boats and just old hulks of boats they've just dumped them all along sort of this bit just sort of just basically to you know protect this bit of beach from you know strong tides and stuff coming in and, and stuff or storm surges so it's, it creates a nice little peaceful little haven it is actually an unofficial nudist beach this beach don't know how I know that and uh, it's just such a nice spot. You've got a couple of little World War II pillboxes dotted around as well. In fact, there's a couple that sort of, one at the start up here, and there's one further up there. And they're the classic um, design that's unique to Essex, apparently. I think they're called like through the wall pillboxes. So basically, along the sea wall, you'll see each half of the pillbox, one on one side, one on the other side. So you'd, you'd enter the pillbox through the back and of course the side that's sticking out towards the sea is the front end where they'd keep watch, you know, for enemy boats and stuff and planes. So lots of history around here. But yeah, it was a really good night last night. We had a really good laugh. I think it's time for some breakfast though, definitely. Still haven't seen a single soul about. It's uh, very, very peaceful here. Okay, so the time's getting on a bit now. Sun is still out, it's lovely weather. A lot of dog walkers and people started turning up, so they didn't bother us though. They seemed uh, quite impressed that we uh, camped here. So I think they was a little bit jealous. So that is the end of this video. It's just sort of a, a shortish video really. Just a nice relaxing camp we've done. And it's always good to come back here to Bradwell on Sea. It's a special place.
great for camping and lots of history, lots to see. It's, it's nice, but you can relax as well. So it's been an absolute pleasure meeting Dan. Like Thank was. you very much, I'm mate. Sure, I'm sure we'll do many more of these. Definitely. Um, we've had a right giggle together yeah. and yeah, just clicked. So we'll um, no doubt probably see you again yep, at some certainly point. Will. Certainly will. In the videos, yeah. So. And all that leads me to say is, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Get in the comments and as always, let us know what you think. And cheers very much for the support. It does mean a hell of a lot. And hopefully at some point as well, I look forward to meeting some of you in the future. If you do want to join me for a, a camp or a walk or maybe explore something, you pick. So yeah, it's much appreciated. Take care of yourselves, look after each other, stay safe get out there see you later guys cheers, cheers. bye <laughs>